How's it going everybody? Thank you once again for stopping by my channel and checking out my video. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if this is your first time to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you do dig my content. In part four of my motorcycle gear guide video series, I'm going to talk about boots. So what makes a good boot and what do you need to look for when you're picking out a pair? Well, ideally, you would want to wear something like this. However, this type of boot is pretty impractical for riding around on the street. Something like this is made for the track and it provides the best possible protection you can get. Um, but we're just going to use this for an example to kind of explain what you need to look for when you're buying a set of boots. So starting at the back of the boot, you'll have protection in the heel. Moving forward, you're going to have protection in the toe. You're going to have slide protection on the outside part of the toe. You're going to have basically your shift pad, which I don't really know why they always put these on the right side of the boot because you never really use that. But anyways, you'll have a pad right here for your shifter. Moving up the boot, you're going to have ankle protection right here on both sides, this side and this side. And then up at the top of the boot, you're going to have shin protection right here. So when you're looking for a pair of motorcycle boots to buy, you're going to want to make sure that it has all the armor in all the right places, all the way from the back to the, from the heel, all the way up to the toe, to the ankle, and then to the shin. This part of the sole, these boots, actual good riding boots, are designed to withstand crushing this direction right here. Now I'm going to use this. I'll show you this here real quick. This boot, it will flex like this, so you can bend your toe in it. However, when you try to twist a proper riding boot, it's not going to get much twist out of it. Not to mention, you could probably almost park a car on top of the boot this direction. Uh, having good crush protection as far as the sole is concerned is very important. So when you're looking for proper motorcycle boots, make sure that the sole has good crush protection to it. Uh, say for example, you went down in a crash and your motorcycle landed either on your left foot or on your right foot. Having a boot that's got really good crush protection in the sole is going to save your foot. So this boot right here is basically the far end of the spectrum as far as protection is concerned. I don't wear these on the street. I did a few times, but they're just, they're just too much. You know, they're, they're too hot, uh, which is a negative of this style of boot. It's way too hot. It's way too bulky. And it's just, it's just impractical for riding around on the street. So we'll go all the way to the other end of the spectrum and talk about the other style of boot. This boot right here, you could consider it almost like a sneaker. Uh, it's an actual motorcycle boot that comes up above the ankle, which you should have uh, in a proper boot. Uh, this one has hard ankle protection on the outside of the foot as well as on the inside. You can't see it there, but there is a piece of armor inside there for the inside of the ankle. This also has toe protection in it. It's a hard toe box. It also has ankle protection in it. A nice stiff sole. You can't twist it, but it will bend with your foot this direction. I would highly recommend a boot like this if you're going to be doing a lot of city commuting, uh, riding around town, going to pick up groceries, uh, going to hanging out with your buddies in the town, stuff like that. Now another alternative to that type of boot is basically the same type of boot, except this one has a lot more protection in it on the exterior of the boot. Now, if you can see back here compared to the other shoe, uh, this one's got a lot more ankle protection at the back of your foot right here. This is all hard plastic protection back here. And this puppy could probably slide down the road for 38 miles and before it would wear all the way through. Uh, this one also has an exterior toe slider. And yeah, I've used it a couple times lightly, but uh, this one has all the protection of the other shoe and basically all the protection of a real you know motorcycle racing boot except it's a uh, basically just over the ankle it doesn't come up as high as a regular a, a taller riding boot would uh, this one does have hard ankle protection on the inside there hard part hard ankle protection here behind the velcro enclosure and like i said it's got that nice uh, hard plastic ankle protector back here it also has the uh, toe protector right here nice and stiff you cannot squeeze that and crush it and it also has a nice stiff sole, which has some flex to it. This one's not as flexible as the other sneaker type, uh, but it is very crush resistant and very twist resistant. Uh, this is my go-to boot if I'm going to be hopping on the highway for short trips and uh, basically, you know, going out of town or something like that. And I don't feel like wearing a, a fuller, a taller boot. Basically, what's really convenient about this type right here is it's got, it doesn't have any shoe strings on it. You basically just slide your foot in there, zip it back up, and attach the Velcro. 
works really well. You can get these boots on and off rather quickly. So they're nice to have something like this. Another thing I wanted to mention about riding boots and riding shoes is if you buy a pair of boots that has shoe strings on them and you have to lace them up, if they don't come with a Velcro strap that goes over top of the strings and keeps that boot from coming untied, you're going to want to take your shoe strings and tuck them down inside the boot, like in this area right here. Tuck the strings down inside the boot right here after you've tied them up. That way it keeps your strings from flopping around. You don't want to step off of your bike and have your uh, shoestring get caught in one of your pegs or come to a stop at a stoplight and go to put your foot down and your shoestring is caught in one of your pegs. So if you have a boot that ties up, after you tie it up, just take and tuck the extra strings down inside next to your ankle right there. But uh, ideally, if you buy a boot that has strings on it, make sure and get one that's got a Velcro strap like this that goes over top of the strings and it can keep the strings in place so that they don't get in the way. Okay, now moving on to a boot that is very practical for riding on the street. And this is the type of boot that I would recommend for most people uh, to ride with if you can get away with it, if it doesn't bother you too much. Uh, this is basically a full height boot. Uh, it's got all the hard armor protection on the back, on the front, toe slider right here. It's got toe box protection, got a nice stiff sole to it. Uh, it's still got some flexibility to it, as you can see. These are even more flexible than the, than the other boots. Uh, these are good for walking around in. Uh, it's got shin protection in it. It's got ankle protection in it. A uh, nice thing about these boots is that it is a zipper style enclosure. Go all, zip it all the way down, put your foot in, zip it back up, attach the Velcro. Um, a boot like this, I do not think would come off your foot in an accident. So that's definitely a positive of this. Uh, another nice thing about this, if you notice this pair right here is waterproof. I bought these specifically for riding in cold and wet weather, uh, but they are actually quite comfortable. I can ride around even in the summertime with these boots on. Uh, the nice thing about these boots over the, uh, the white pair that I showed you is that they're not, they're not as stiff. They're not as restrictive in your movement and everything. Uh, they do have quite a bit more flex to them. They don't have all that you know, exterior armor and joints and things going on over here. So it doesn't really feel like you're wearing something that's, that's so tight around your, around your feet that you, you can't move around with it so much. But, uh, this type of boot right here, the pros of it, it provides excellent protection from the bottom of your feet all the way to the top of your shin. Uh, the cons of this boot, obviously it's going to get pretty warm. Yeah. Sometimes it will. Um, however, if you buy a boot that's like this, that's not a waterproof version. You can get um, perforated, ventilated versions of these type of boots, and they work excellent for almost any type of riding season. So those are the two type of proper motorcycle riding boots. You have your tall boot for basically highway cruising or, or uh, when higher speeds are involved or something when you, when you think you need more protection than just a boot like this. These are very excellent. Uh, if you can get away with riding, a tall, riding with a tall boot like that on a daily basis, I say go ahead and do it. Uh, just provides the more and more protection is, is better. Uh, then you have a boot that's like this, which basically has all the protection of this, only it's shorter. It doesn't give you that shin protection. Now I know uh, motorcycle boots are something that's often neglected by a lot of you guys out there. Uh, wearing a motorcycle boot is extremely important, especially if you plan on walking after an accident. If you're not wearing a motorcycle boot, the odds of you injuring your foot are pretty high, uh, especially if you're tumbling down the road uh, your extremities are going to be flopping around in the breeze doing their thing. Uh, that's why it's very important to wear good motorcycle gloves and very important to wear uh, good motorcycle boots. Uh, every part of your body is important, not just your head. One thing that I've heard several times in the past, even from people that I know, uh, they say, well, I've got a good pair of work boots. I just wear my work boots while riding. Let me uh, point out something to you guys about wearing work boots while riding a motorcycle. Uh, the steel toe that's in those work boots like that, that a lot of guys ride with, when you crush that toe, it doesn't uncrush. If you were to have an accident on your motorcycle wearing steel toed boots and your toe box got crushed, you're basically getting your toes amputated. Uh, the nice thing about proper riding boots, proper motorcycle boots, they have very good toe protection, a good toe box in it. But if you crush this part of your boot in a motorcycle accident, it will come back. It's not going to lock in place like a steel toed boot would. So just, uh, just think about that next time when you're thinking about going out on a ride in you and you put your construction boots on and you think that's going to be good enough protection for you. Sure. Those things have stiff soles in them and they have steel toes in them, which I guess is it's pretty good protection all considering, but, uh, take those things into account. You know, if you have work boots that you're going to think about riding in, 
uh, do the twist test on the sole and do the crush test on the sole, see how much weight, you know, if, do you think a 600 pound motorcycle lying on the side of your, of your boot like this, if it, it, do you think your boot's gonna be able to hold that bike up? Uh, if not, just imagine having 600 pounds laying on the side of your foot like that. You want a boot that's gonna be able to hold a motorcycle up. Uh, one thing you have to think about, if you injure your foot in a motorcycle accident, how are you gonna get around for weeks, months, maybe even the rest of your life? So just don't take the chance of going out riding without proper motorcycle boots on. So in conclusion of this video, I want to thank everybody for watching. And if you watch my other uh, riding gear guide videos, I want to thank you for watching those, uh, everybody. If you're new to the channel, uh, remember to subscribe if you like my content. And I appreciate every one of you that watches my videos. So until next time, everybody out there, ride safe and have a good day. And we will see you on the next one.